So this jumped to the head of the list. This is uh, a recent purchase by me, uh, 1960, The Making of the President. Um, I needed a break from uh, the Musket and Pike series. I'm not going to go into the rules or anything like that very much at all in this game. This is a first view for me, first playing, and uh, I know other people have covered a lot of the basic mechanisms, etc. I may mention things as I'm looking at them. Uh, one of the things that I look at is this is the uh, starting setup. How very different uh, the political landscapes become. You know, I mean, it's all Democrat down there. Um, I'm actually kind of used to this because uh, I guess my favorite of the political games, or at least the one that I played the most, it's good old uh, 3M, Mr. President, Mr. P. Um, and that's not too much later than this in terms of the broad strokes of the landscape. Um, you definitely see the West all the way out, including California, being very Republican. And you see the South remaining very... Uh, very conservative Democrat. Um, the East is, uh, yeah, I, I would say it, it has it did not change much between the the two game periods, um, which is strange given when the three M game came out. I would suspect the South was already beginning to defect pretty heavily. Anyway. Uh, what do I, I see about this that really struck me? One was these little uh, tokens for the... Uh, contain the votes. They're only used at the end of the game to tally up. Kind of a... Uh, you know, just an add-on bonus thing. But they really made me happy since each one has a state seal on it. And... Uh, those are things that I'm not too used to all the state seals, so that's that's kind of a fun uh, fun aspect for me. Um, from what I understand, this is a, a CDG. I've read the rules; it is uh, similar to the, the other great CDG war game, uh, Twilight Struggle. To be fair, this you know Twilight Struggle is really in a gray area. This one is clearly not. <laughs> Uh, and I like political games, so this should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm still not absolutely certain about some aspects of the game. So I think as the cards come out, etc., I'm going to get more feel. Uh, get the major issues of the day out here. Defense, economy, and civil rights. And that's the order that they're in right now. Now that can be shifted around by player actions. Um, each player has their own little bonus card, which can be used as a five, uh, I don't know, campaign points, I think they're called, uh, which is the same as operations points or whatever. And they also have a couple of momentum chits, which allow them to sort of reverse, uh, well, they allow, uh, the only use that I can think, that is in my head right now is when you, draw, when you play an event card, when you play an operations card, your opponent could throw a momentum card to trigger the event on that. If you play it, if, if, if it's one of their events. Um, you can say, ah, oh, that's too dangerous an event. Before you play the card, or as you're playing it, interdict and prevent, uh, you can protect against your opponent being able to do so with two momentum chips. Uh, it's got to be a, a heck of a, an event to protect with that, though, because you could get two good events out of the other player for that. Um, somebody already explained, we get a little bag here filled with uh, these chits. I'm not sure about the randomization ability of that. Uh, some of these little cubes. And, as, again, as far as I can tell, the only thing rest is, does is it adds more cubes to your, your pile. Um, 
Generally, you're going to be playing support, again, very much like Twilight Struggle, uh, in, into areas. However, only one person can have support in a particular area. Your goal is to win the states, to have the most support in, in enough states to win the Electoral College. Uh, that's pretty simple. <laughs> you can only campaign in the region you're in. It costs you points to move from region to region. That's going to make things like Alaska and Hawaii really, really hard to get to. And they're probably not worth it for their cost. Um, in general, I've found in political American political games that a strategy of screw the small states is usually the best. Um, and I think that's going to be the case here. It costs just as much to campaign in little states as big states. And I don't see a lot of advantage to swinging them. There is one thing that does, though. Um, there are, I don't know what they're called, they're, they're momentum cards in the deck that if you control the majority of areas in, the, uh, in a region, then you get a big bonus throughout the region. Uh, so, early in the game, it may be important to gain control of a lot of areas. I'm going to try to keep that in mind. That's a little different from how I usually will play uh, in these types of games. Usually I say, ah, it's just not worth you know screwing around for the little states. Uh, what else do we have? Here's another thing that I'm not absolutely certain how valuable they are, these endorsements. These are tiebreakers, as far as I can tell, at the end of the game. And they get placed in the region, and they'll give you uh, swing states. They may have other effects in the cards. Uh, that's one of the problems. I don't know if the, you know, the rules don't cover everything that's going to happen based here, and there may be some really important factors in that. I'm kind of excited to look forward. I'm going to, you know, devise my strategies based on what I know. Um, there's sort of persistent events up here, which take place. Uh, preventive events can stop somebody from playing their own events. Debate events, they take place in this special little debate subsequence that's going to happen uh, on what... Turn six. Each turn has a series of essentially card plays. And let me see. Then there's uh, election day events, which, you know, you can do ballot stuff and stuff like that. And these are all played during the normal play of the game and then just sit out here and presumably take effect when they take effect. Another thing that you have is your campaign strategy which allows you each turn in the first part of the game before the debates to dump cards into here that will help you in the debates themselves. And then when we hit the last couple turns where there's extra cards uh, for each turn, you're allowed to dump two cards in and they affect uh, the election day itself. All right, I'm going to jump in because again, I don't really know the rules too well, so I want to get playing so that I don't tell you too many wrong things. Um, so the game started off, you draw cubes from the bag, and three cubes had to be drawn. Basically you draw until somebody has drawn two. Uh, the first one was red, the second one blue, the third one red. Nixon gets initiative. Now he chose to allow Kennedy to go first, and after looking at his cards, Kennedy played this as a uh, campaign point card. He gets a rest cube, which will just go back in the bag at the end of the turn, I think. And this is a Nixon event, so Nixon could have triggered the event. Uh, he chose not to. Um, Kennedy chooses to use a positioning action. It was a 3 CP card, so he got one token on each issue. He could have taken 
one plus two is three tokens on one issue. Um, it costs more to put a second one on the same issue. It seems reasonable to spread out and grab those issues. Why am I grabbing issues to begin with? Well, each turn you get bonuses at the end of the turn if you control the issues. So you get uh, momentum and endorsements for controlling issues. Those seem like a good idea, so I'm going to go for them. Um, other options would have been to campaign, presumably in the Northeast. Uh, he had some cards that maybe could have done cool stuff, but that's what he chose. Nixon plays a uh, gathering momentum card in the Midwest. <coughs> Excuse me. That gives him a bonus momentum chip. Now you want to use these before the end of your turn because they degrade, or before the end of the uh, the game turn, because they degrade back in the momentum phase. Um, he also gets one state support in each Midwestern state currently having no support for either candidate which as you can see is where three, four, five, six different uh, states giving him a huge lead over there. Um, this is a bonus time for this card. And much better than the four CP he could have gotten off of it. Now, yeah, that's it. Kennedy plays a four CP card to just grab uh, dominance in New York State. now. Carrying a state that's four cubes in there makes it harder for your opponent to take it from you. So Nixon could just go and campaign in Massachusetts and one for one remove uh, cubes. But if he wants to do it in New York now that uh, uh, Kennedy's carrying it, or wherever the opposing candidate is, he has to actually just, he draws from the bag to determine whether or not the chips uh take uh, the, the campaign points succeed and he draws one sh one cube for each uh, attempt and only the ones that are the correct color succeed so to remove the dominance he would have to actually um, risk not being as successful and it's not like you can say oh I want to take one shot at this okay I'll take another shot at that and then once you get rid of that you can you can just remove you have to do it all in one blast for a particular state on a particular uh, action okay so N Nixon uh, responded basically uh, by playing a three point card to clear out Kennedy's uh, issues advantage and he gets a rest cube now and Kennedy came right back and put them back on playing the powerful New England card now this card uh, can give five uh, state support in the New England area which could be really really potent but that takes the card out of the game and the Kennedy players thinking it would be useful to get that later in the game if needed then to fortify now. Uh, we'll see if that's reasonable or not, but I'm certainly valuing these issues very highly. On Nixon's turn, he's going to play uh, this card, which gives him two points, which he picks up in California and Washington, but he's also spending two momentum chips to prevent Kennedy from activating this event. Um, and he gets a couple of rest chips too. So now we're moving into the momentum phase, but before we get into that, um, Kennedy solidified his hold in the Northeast, and he's really built up a strong lead uh, throughout the states there. Meanwhile, uh, Nixon's doing the same kind of action over in the West. Uh, he spent this card, which might have been useful early. Uh, Jackie Kennedy costs uh, Nixon more as he drools over her or something. Um, it might, uh, it might have been a very useful card for Kennedy to trump into early in the turn, but on the last card it means nothing. And he cleared out the issues track again, thereby preventing Kennedy from getting any bonus going into things. Uh, into the momentum phase. I think I can handle this. 
directly. First thing is, there's decay. It's half rounded down. Nixon's only got one, he's fine. Kennedy's got two, he loses one. So, he definitely took a pain for that. Awards for issue support, nobody's got any. Uh, issue decay, the issue support would drop. And then issue shift, if somebody has uh, issues, uh, if somebody has media uh, endorsements, they could switch um, to adjacent issues and make something more important in the order. Does that matter? Well, if you got a lot of chips on it, certainly. If you think you've got cards that favor something, that would also. But I don't know cards well. Uh, okay, then we go to the campaign strategy phase. And in this, um, each player gets to dump a card into the strategy deck. Uh, Kennedy's got to go first, and I'm going to show you what he's got and why. Um, this card is worth two points and could be used by either player. So he's looking at it as, I don't really lose anything by putting this in here, and I can use it in the debates. Sounds good. Nixon is holding the Johnson card, which is a heavy vote-getting card. This is going to produce four points for Kennedy on the uh, civil rights issue. It has to go to Kennedy, but burying this card seems more valuable to Nixon than perhaps the advantage from the debates. Because when you win the debates, um, what you're hoping to get is some state support cubes. And the best you can get is four off one issue. If Nixon can dump a lot of garbage into one or two issues and compete on one of them, he can break even on the debate and maybe not lose very badly in that. And can manage his hand better in that way. At least that's how I'm looking at it. It might change the strategy at different times. I just had two cards I didn't want to play. One was... Uh, Uh, the late returns from Cook County, which counts in the election. And see, if Kennedy has to play it as an event, that's fine and dandy. He's giving up his, uh, his campaign points for that. But if Nixon plays it and Kennedy got away playing one, a momentum chip, which he was going to lose anyway, that would suck. Uh, and likewise, this other card is powerful enough that I would rather bury it for now than let Kennedy get a chance to play it, even if it gives him an advantage in the debates. All right, I'm going to wrap this one up because that's the end of the first turn. And we go to the second turn, and I'll start that up. And I'll probably go in less detail as we go. But I wanted to give a feel, as I'm learning the game, of what I'm learning. Oh, the other thing, all these go in the bag, along with all those. Let me touch on the cubes in the bag issue. Um, if you've noticed with the cards, the ones with high value and potent events generally generate less rest cubes than the lower valued cards. So this is kind of a balancing factor. The better you do in terms of the better cards you had in your hand for power, etc., that you played, the less coffee you get. And the less chance of initiative, success in, in uh, uh, fighting for control of states that aren't yours, or that are being carried, the less chance of getting advertising, all these things that draw from the bag. So if you're doing poorly in some aspects of the cards, you tailor your play to rely more on the bag because you're throwing more pieces in there. Okay, now I'm gone for good. <laughs>